On September 4th, 2019, Trevor Jones, a lecturer in musical theater at Griffith University, published a piece on theconversation.com asking the question, why are so many musicals adapted to movies? It's a fantastic read and really makes you think why you love certain musicals and why you hate certain ones. Perhaps you love Hairspray for the feelings of freedom, love, and justice it delivers, or maybe you feel empowered by the cell block tango from Chicago. Maybe you're a Disney nerd and you only watch the animated ones for nostalgia. Whatever your reason, musicals have become a staple in cinema and continue to grow and capture our hearts each year. Join us today as we take a look at both cinematic and Broadway musicals and discuss what we love, what we hate, and what we really want to see. This is 21st Century Cinema with Joseph Delavecchia and Ava Carvello. Hello and welcome to 21st Century Cinema, the podcast about film and the film industry. I'm one of your hosts, Joseph Delavecchia, and joining me today is actually a special fill-in co-host. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the podcast, first time, Noah Shepard. Hi, Noah. Hey, Joe. Thanks for having me. It's nice to have you here, buddy. So, uh, for those that may have listened to episodes in the past, this is not the same Noah from before. That's Noah Schaefer. So, if you absolutely hated that Noah, don't worry. Stick around. This one is fantastic, and he's going to talk to us about musicals. Uh, If you did love that Noah, don't worry. He'll be back. He'll be back. But if you hated him, he won't be back. Okay? Whatever makes you happy and makes you listen to the rest of the episode. (laughs) So, as I mentioned, we will be talking about musicals today. Noah, you are actually a uh, theater nerd. Huge, yes, huge big theater, theater nerd. nerd. Um, back home in Newfoundland, you are actually a part of a theater. Yes. Yes, you want to talk a little bit about that? Yeah, um, uh, for the past four summers, I have worked at the Grand Bank Regional Theater in uh, southern Newfoundland, and I've been an actor with them uh, since uh, my grade 10 year in high school, the summer of 2016, and every year I just love it more and more. Well, I'm glad that we have you here. You know what you're talking about. You seem to be passionate about it. Absolutely. Like having that on. Now, before we jump in, I am aware that this is the first episode of the podcast in a few weeks, so I just want to address that before we begin. Um, Me and Ava actually did create a lot of great new episodes for you guys. Sadly, however, there was a problem with those episodes and the files and uploading them, so we actually lost a lot of work. So we are very sorry. We're in the process of redoing some and coming up with new episodes. So to keep everyone entertained, we are deeming August our hiatus. And we are now back. We're going to have a bunch of new episodes coming up over the next few weeks. We've got a new one this week, which is, of course, me and Noah here talking about musicals. Uh, Ava will be talking about musical scores next week and a special episode she is doing. And then the week after that, we will be back doing our Q&A as promised. And then we'll be back into a normal episode flow. So thank you, everybody, for being patient and still listening. And without further ado... Let's jump in. So today we're going to be taking a look. Me and Noah have each brought five musicals to the table. Four of them are films. Maybe we love them. Maybe we hate them. Maybe we're just in on them but want to talk about some things they've done. So we're going to go through those. And then we have one that's a Broadway musical that has not been adapted yet and into film. And we're going to talk about that and why we would love to see this be brought onto the big screen. So Noah, I'll let you start off with your first pick. All right. I, I got to go with a, a, a classic um theater one but the movie adaptation is uh splits a lot of audiences i'm gonna go with Les Mis. okay um Les Mis is so the musical is so powerful in every way um it's just from performances to the script to the acting it's just always been um a very almost classy uh musical without being afraid to get a little provocative in its imagery Unfortunately, the movie doesn't really live up to that. The movie is... The movie's interesting, to say the least. So, um, I've actually never finished watching the movie. I couldn't make it through. I, 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 I don't like it. Um, it has Hugh Jackman, and I, I, I like Hugh Jackman. And he's, he's, decent, he's, he's decent in it. He's okay. Um, who is it? Is it Russell Crowe that's in it? That uh, He can't sing. I'm sorry. No, that's, that's a problem with a lot of movie yeah. musicals, is they cast people... That are movie stars, mm-hmm. not not whether it's Broadway stars who do film or even singers. It's just and like uh, Beauty and the Beast, Emma Watson. That was a little bit of one of the issues. Yeah, but she did. At least she wasn't absolutely. She wasn't absolutely terrible. And that's also no. how I feel about Emma Emma Stone in La La Land. Uh, she's she's mm. decent. When Ryan Gosling, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, well, not the strongest voice on him. We'll get to La La, but La La Land. But even so, I think he did a better job than Russell Crowe. 
Yeah, it's hard to do a worse job than Russell Crowe. It is. It's like, and I, I, I don't dislike Russell Crowe as an actor and his non-musical scenes as uh, uh, Javert are great, but they're, well, not great. They're okay. They're passable. But, oh, uh, man, he just brings his death scene, everything. He just brings it down. It's, I don't know, the movie, I think, it tried to adapt yet still be its own thing, which is something that I can respect, but it wasn't done well. It's just, I just find it so unappealing and just so hard to watch. I can't really explain what it is, but it's just yeah. hard for me to sit down and focus on that movie and just enjoy well, it. Well, it's, somehow they managed to make a musical boring it's not. It's just not an exciting mm-hmm. movie. It doesn't have those rise and falls the same way that, um, the same way that the stage play does. But like, and it has a very powerful text as well. Oh, absolutely. Mm-hmm. It, it is. It's just. It's. It's a very well written piece. It always has been. But I don't think that Les Mis was the right thing to. Like you said, like they tried to do their own thing mm-hmm. with it. I don't think Les Mis was the right thing to try risks. It a hundred percent wasn't, especially when um it's something that is old and you have people who either love it because maybe they've just recently discovered it or they read it once or they seen the Broadway musical or you have people who are like history nerds. Like I know a lot of history people who love old books and old texts like Absolutely. Shakespeare and um, Jane Eyre and all that like all that work from that time period. Well, not that exact time period, but over those like. The 1500s, 1700s, like those works. Like I, people like that, they love that because a the history, b the writing, and c just because of the stories that it told and how it opened storytelling. So there's a lot of things that like you really don't want to, in a sense, piss people off with there. Absolutely. And I feel like to a lot of those fans, like there's a difference between doing your own thing and then giving a middle finger. And I think I won't say a lot, but in some of those things, it was a middle finger to fans. Yeah, and. Mm-hmm. Uh, Les Mis does do some things right. I don't want to just slag it off completely mm-hmm. because um, Eddie Redmayne's pretty... He, he's, he's pretty good in it. I've only seen Eddie Redmayne in one bad performance. Yeah. And everything he's done. And that's Jupiter Ascending. <laughs> I I skipped that one for uh, obvious reasons. Uh, um, but yeah, he's pretty good in that. And Anne Hathaway's uh, version of... Um, I Dream to Dream. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, it's a great performance. And um, I believe she did not one take. In, did uh, she? Yeah, I believe her really? performance was done. I I believe I heard that that she did in one take. Um, and like, there's some good performances, but it just and the cinematography is very nice. I do appreciate really nice cinematography. Um, yeah. it's yeah, the cin- I can't complain about the cinematography. I can't. No, no, me neither. Like one thing that I will say that I actually like a little bit better is that when I've um seen um like some clips online and uh, also in like. I don't know if you have this out in Newfoundland, <laughs> um, but our theaters here, they sometimes show Broadway musicals on the big screen for like an afternoon. So okay. you can go to like the theater, like the movie theater, buy a ticket and watch like Broadway musicals. Yeah. So working at the movie theater in my high school years, I got, I saw like the trailer for them every three months when they would change up the lineup. And for one of them, it was Les Mis. And I saw this and I also saw it from online clips, is that it's very dark Les Mis. It's very, very, much very so. black, very plain yes. um, with the backdrops. And I like that the movie added a little bit more to spruce it up a bit. They didn't go overboard and then make nope. it sound like this big, like, colorful explosion, but they spruce it up a little bit. And I do like that because it really does make the directing, the shots, the camera movements, and also just some of the scenes a lot a lot better. Just a lot better. One of the things I'm really glad they stayed true to is um, the symbolism of the color red throughout. Mm-hmm. Like, especially with the French flags, with the French Revolution. That was that was really well done um, throughout, actually, throughout both the, both the Broadway musical and the movie. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Symbolism uh, with colors is very, very important. And I, I will agree with you on that yeah. point. So now for my first pick, as you said, we were going to get to it. We're going to uh, talk about La La Land. I hate <laughs> La La Land. I love La La Land. It's not even a bad movie. I just hate everything it stands Before for. Before we get into this, I just want to give the viewers a moment to collect themselves. Because as you know, Noah, I don't like many things. Very true. And, Very true. Um, I believe you've listened to a few episodes of this podcast where I you have. will know I don't really talk nicely about things things no i I find myself arguing with you in my car yeah (laughs) you're not the first person to tell me that a lot of people tell me they're like i just argue i yell at you in my car (laughs) 
Yeah. Shout out to Sue, who tells me that after every single episode. But, <laughs> <laughs> um, so go ahead, tell me why you don't like it, and then, or should I start off with the pros? You go ahead. Okay. So, I absolutely love this movie. As I, It's not a perfect movie. As I said, Ryan Gosling singing is not the, oh, not the best, but it's also not the worst. No, it's not the worst. It's, it's not, not the, the worst. worst but I think anyway. it's a beautifully crafted tale. Um, it tells a fantastic story. Um, it pretty much just speaks to those who are trying to achieve dreams, especially if you're going into the arts and just something where it's hard to get into that industry. It's hard to get in, and it really does speak to those people who are still fighting for it or think about maybe giving up. It is a tale that inspires you to continue going, to do more with your life. Uh, it shows you that no matter what, the love is out there. It's a fantastic love story and a fantastic story. I don't want to say coming of age, but a, in a sense, a coming of age. Like, they're not coming of age traditionally, but in terms of realizing what their goals are and how to achieve them. And then it, of course, also asks the question of, like, would they sacrifice their careers and their dreams for love? And in the end, they actually do follow their hearts and their dreams, which is something that I think is very important. I think when you're in a relationship, if you truly do love someone, you should always encourage them to follow their dreams. You should never, of course, oh, put, absolutely. A, put a bar on that. So I absolutely love how that is handled. The directing and cinematography is so well done. Damien Chazelle is a fantastic director. He won Best Director for this film. He was the youngest and still is the youngest person to ever receive the award. Um, fantastic job. I absolutely love it. I think he is very well-deserved. I think the songs, even though maybe the performances aren't the greatest, the writing for the songs is fantastic. They are catchy. And Damien Chazelle, and he does it with this movie and with Whiplash, he finds a fantastic way to bring jazz in more to the 21st century and make a lot of people appreciate jazz more. I'm not that big on jazz music. I wasn't this, um, maybe like, you know, like some Sinatra, like when he does a little bit of, of jazz in his songs, of course, I like that. But this movie really did help me enjoy jazz more and also help me be able to listen to it a lot more in the background and stuff. Like, I find jazz a lot more calming than irritating like I used to. And I believe a lot of that is owed to Whiplash and La La Land. So I think this movie is fantastic. It's also a modern day musical, which is something that we had never really seen before, especially being adapted on screen. Something that a lot of people laughed at Damien Chazelle for and did not support, did not think it was a good idea for him to do this. So I'm very, very happy that he got it done. He did a fantastic job with it, and I absolutely love the movie. And it is one of my favorite musicals of all time. Go ahead and tell me why I'm wrong. <laughs> it's a screen musical, correct? It is a screen it's musical. It's never been a stage musical. Never been a stage. That's what I thought. And that's that's the basis of why I don't like it. Not because it didn't stem from Broadway, but like there's so many good underground musicals that never get any legs because just because of where they're to like uh, whether it's off-broadway musicals um little shop of horrors never made it till broadway till way later um recently we just had spongebob the musical on broadway which was really good really good music and it never recouped it never made its money back and my issue with la la land is that it didn't pay its dues it went out signed two big blockbuster stars with mediocre voices and used that to carry it the story's pretty good I'm not going to argue with that. Um, it's a little bit too Hollywood vanity for me. As uh, as I heard someone uh, describe it when it was uh, up for the Oscar. Um, Hollywood's love letter to itself. I liked a Screen Junkies joke of Hollywood handjob. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> that yeah, was good. Yeah, that's, that's more how I view it. <laughs> but, um, yeah, it just... There's so much that could have been... There's so much that it didn't have to go through. And like I said, it's it's definitely an above average movie. It's a pretty good movie. But in my opinion as a musical, it's average at best and there's so many that could have taken into that year, into that awards race and just weren't given the chance because you had Ryan Gosling and Emma Stone playing opposite each other. Um so you're saying that your main like big problem with this is that it didn't essentially pay its use, it just went into theaters and became a big success. It's not it's not so much uh, well yeah, yeah, absolutely. I think it's more so it it was piggybacking off of pre established things where Such as its director and its cast? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, okay, like that, that's that type fair. of stuff. Where you had so many more people, more ta uh, more talented in that one area. Emma Stone and Ryan Gosling are amazing actors, and their director is amazing. I'm not taking that away from them. But it's a musical. Acting's only half the story. There's so many other people. That, mov uh, that movie could have elevated 
so many other, whether it's like the theater world, whether it's the musical world, or whether it's actors from the Broadway scene or Undiscovered People. It had such a chance to elevate so much around it and did none of that. Now, because you're just talking about this, I want to just shift a little bit over here to another movie that I wanted to talk about a little bit but didn't put it on my list so this is my way of like interluding it um a movie that came out in 19 in the 1960s uh the original Hairspray yes was not a Broadway musical no a film immediate it was firstly a film then it was adapted onto Broadway and then it got a remake in the um mid 2000s early 2010s somewhere around that area um I personally like that remake more I agree that remake with Zac Efron, John Travolta, um, William, William Defoe. I couldn't think of his name for a second. Willem. <laughs> Willem. Defoe. Sorry, Willem Defoe. I always pronounce his name wrong. <laughs> but um, yeah, I, I thought that one was far better yep, than the original. But I, do, I bring this up just because the original didn't really pay its dues. It became a movie right away. It was a smashing success, and that's why it got a Broadway make. And then, yes. of course, a remake later on. The difference I have with that is that... It came in, uh, you said, uh, when was the original release? The 60s? The 60s. Yeah. So that's a very different theater landscape. And, like, a very different musical landscape where you're coming off the backs of the Golden Age. Some will argue that it's still within the Golden Age. And it's one of these big hits that elevated the theater world by being a movie. Then... It went and paid its dues on Broadway, and that's why I think the next one is so much better, because it also elevated so much. It did. It used it used its pre-established stars as, like John Travolta and um, Christopher Walken's in it, right? Christopher Walken is in it. Yes. Um, so is Queen Latifah. Yes. It used mm -hmm. them to elevate the rest of the cast with it, mm -hmm. while La La Land is very much uh, centered on on Ryan Gosling and Emma Stone. Okay, that's fair. I'm not arguing with you. I just was wondering your yeah. opinion in the no, differ. I think uh, Hairspray, different... Hairspray is actually the first musical I saw. Really? Yeah, yeah, the first like movie musical I sat down and watched. Mm -hmm. um, I, I was in grade three, and I didn't get it. <laughs> Do you get it now? Oh, absolutely. Okay, it's just important. It. As, yeah, long as, as, it, as long as you get it, as long as you get it now, that's the point. I love it. <laughs> But yeah, no, I absolutely love Hairspray 2. It is probably my number two favorite musical of all time. Okay. The only reason why I didn't put it on my list is because I just want to talk about these other movies a little bit yeah. that I have on there. But you have your second pick. Go right ahead. Um, my second pick is Rent. I do. I love Rent. Who doesn't love Rent? I had. The, I sadly missed the opportunity. So there's a small um, theater. I live in the Niagara area. So in Niagara Falls, they have a small theater. And this theater right there, uh, the Fire Hall Theater, they put on three shows every year. And one year they actually put on Rent. I sadly was not able to go. I try to go as often as I can to all the shows. But my mother went and she just came back. She was, oh my, it was so good. They put on an amazing, sh and to this day she still hasn't shut up about how amazing Rent was. And I'm still pissed that I missed Rent's it. Rent's amazing. But Rent is amazing. So go ahead. What I'm here to talk about is the movie Rent. <laughs> which, it's pretty damn accurate to uh the original it is and it's one of the musicals that or it's one of the movies that even though like it does fall short a little bit it's a bit gloom like a bit gloomy not in themes because that's just the way rent is it's supposed to be but well not it's supposed to be have that balance but like the colors and stuff it's muted the cinematography isn't anything really special but it's so true to the original uh to the original vision that it just has to be commended for it. And the performances are great. They they did a good job casting. Um, I, I can't think of anyone who really falls short. Maybe, is it, uh, is it Mark? Yeah, I think Mark's a little bit on the weaker side compared to the rest of his cast. Played by Anthony Rapp. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, Mark's a little, compared to the rest of the cast and the, uh, I, I can't remember which actor originated the role. But it's very much, uh, it's very much true to it. He also still gives a good performance. Mm -hmm. I'm looking at it now because, um, I thought it was a lot older, but it's 2005. Oh yeah, right. I thought I thought it, I thought the movie came out in like the 90s. No, no, it's 2005. Okay, the musical came out as a rock musical in the 90s, mm -hmm. and it was one of those things where, um, roughly they say roughly about every 10 years Broadway breaks, so it's. 
Rent's one of the ones that started. The past three years, we've had a smash hit roughly every ten years. It could be nine, depending. People argue about when Hamilton truly came in. <laughs> but um, usually it goes Rent in 96, 97, around then. Wicked in 2006, 2007. It was 2005 as well, it dipped in. And Hamilton in 2016, 2017. And those... The ability to just get the weight that that musical had on Broadway and capture that feeling in the movie is just really well done. Now, here's my question for you, because I don't know this theater world that well. Do those three, I know those are, they're all musicals. Now, is there like a separate three for plays? Or did, is that just like overall for all of Broadway, like what oh, dominates? Those are the three main musicals. Musicals okay. usually dominate on Broadway mm-hmm. for the most part. Are um, you telling me that musicals are outselling the genius work that is Harry Potter and the Cursed Child? We don't talk about that, <laughs> Joe. Joe, you know that's a sensitive area. We don't talk about that. Sorry, continue though. Oh, I can't believe I spent money on that book version. Anyway, um, yeah, no, Rent just really, really gets down Jonathan Larson's original village, uh, vi- vision. Um, and it's just, uh, it, it really does capture the spirit that that musical carries and that it deserves. I 100% concur with you. I love the cast. Um, I think it was essentially just trying to put the musical, like you said, just into the real world and film it on real locations. There's nothing fancy about it, but I think that's good because it lets the work fe- speak for itself. Absolutely. It really does, and it really does get the message and the characters across. So I don't, I don't have any quarrels with it. I know a lot of people, too, that, um, like, they've obviously listened or watched musicals before, but the Rent movie is what really gets them into the musical world. And I notice especially, um, the movie version gets people who are in the theater world but not into musicals, into musicals. When I was into musicals, I I saw Rent, so I can't really speak from that standpoint. Yeah. But I can really see that. It's very appealing to all audiences. Absolutely. It is. Also, uh, just the the score is kicks ass. The the soundtrack. Yeah, the soundtrack. Yeah, the The soundtrack. soundtrack. The soundtrack also kicks ass. I was just like, I was like, the sound. No, it's not a soundtrack. Oh, no, soundtrack. no, it is. I'm so glad that I Kansas know this. Is a stuff. movie. Sa- if it's mm-hmm. the movie version, it's a soundtrack. I promise, I'm qualified to be on this podcast. <laughs> if now, if we're talking about the Broadway version, usually you would talk about um, OBC, original Broadway cast. You just refer to it as that. But um, so, it, if you say soundtrack, nobody's going to jump down your throat. Mm-hmm. Now, my second pick is a movie that actually just came out this summer. Rocket Man. Did you see Rocket Man? I have not seen Rocket Man. Okay. So I've been waiting to see Rocket Man. Okay. Why have you been waiting? Well, I've, I've been busy. Okay. But I've okay. heard it's basically the few. I've heard that Bohemian Rhapsody wasn't good. I know your co host was uh, not very happy with Ava it. Ava is not happy. Me and Ava are both not happy, but okay. Ava is extremely yes, unhappy I'm, with Bohemian Rhapsody. But I've heard it takes what that did well and just does all the stuff it didn't do well well. It essentially does. So, Rocket Man, um, there are a few things where, like, I have quarrels with it, but I'll try not to be too negative on this episode of the podcast. Joe, but what? You feeling all right, buddy? <laughs> um, okay, fine. I'll just go all out on yeah. it. Fine. Fucking fine. Um, okay, Rocket Man. Things I like about the movie first. I really like... I was shocked at how they did it. So, the movie opens up. Sorry, the mic just almost fell off its perch there. Um, the movie opens up with Taron Egerton. He plays Elton John. He does a fantastic job. I need to put that out there first. Amazing casting, amazing job. Um, amazing. He does all of Elton John's songs. He's got a great voice, and he does them in like his own little way. Good. So they're his own still yet within the movie. So I absolutely love that. But the way they do it, so it opens up with him coming into rehab. Uh, After the show in New York City that he ditches. So he comes into rehab, and then they ask him, like, some questions, the therapist, because he's uh, in an Alcoholics Anonymous meeting. So he starts asking him a few questions about his life and his childhood, and that's where we suddenly begin a flashback. But we enter this flashback through a musical. Oh, okay. So we see a little kid version of Elton, and he starts, like, to taunt older Elton. So older Elton chases him, and as they run outside of the rehab center, we're suddenly in the past now. And we okay. break off into a musical, and nice. uh, this brings us into the beginning of our story. And the entire movie is Elton John songs used as a musical to tell the story. Okay, good. And while some songs where, and now I don't know that much about Elton John's music, so some songs where if I were to just listen to them at face value, I would not expect them to be, um, like a conversation between people or anything. 
Um, perhaps it was written to be about those narratives, or perhaps they just adapted them that well to fit these yeah. situations. I cannot say. But either way, they do it very well. So the way they use the songs and the, what they do with it, I absolutely love. Now, there are some scenes where I feel like they were just trying to shove an Elton John song here into the scene. So I feel like they needed to pick and choose their battles a little better. Okay. But I'm not going to give the movie too much uh, quarrel about that. Yeah, I so... I love... Oh. oh, sorry. You know, you yeah. continue. I love um, that Elton John was very big a part of the movie and behind the scenes. He helped cast Taron Egerton. The two of them are friends from the Kingsman movie, and they even performed on stage together before the movie came out. So they have a good chemistry, and you can tell that Taron really took everything very seriously. All the actors do an absolutely fantastic job. The acting's phenomenal. The story's a little iffy here and there. Like, if it, it runs into a few bumps where there are some scenes where you're like, uh, you know, could have done without, could yeah. have been cut. There's some scenes where I'm like, I don't even know why this is in the movie. But in the end, it's very well done. It's so much better than Bohemian Rhapsody. And I really do enjoy it, and I love that they tried something new with making an autobiography about someone, and they used their songs for the music. There's an autobiography currently in development for 2021 about Elvis Presley. Cool. I think it would be really cool if they did something cool. similar like that. However, I don't know if it's... There's very little details about it right now, so we don't know if it's going to be a musical or just mainly a biopic. I think they'll probably just end up making it a biopic. Probably. But I would not be opposed to seeing um, an Elvis Presley musical with his music use. I'm not a big Elvis Presley fan, and I feel like that would help me gather more of an appreciation because just like with Elton John, I wasn't really a big fan, and now I am much more of a fan, and I listen to more of his songs and enjoy it more because of Rocket Man. I didn't realize Rocket Man was a jukebox musical. So that basically, like, if you were to, um, uh, what is it? Is it Rock of Ages? Is that one? Yeah, I think Rock of Ages. Rock of Ages is, uh, yeah, I think that's a movie. Uh, I might have the name wrong. <laughs> But uh, I believe Rock of Ages is one of the, um, uh, is, uh, yeah, a jukebox correct. music. Yeah, a jukebox musical. Jukebox musical. Uh, same as, um, The songs of Journey, Bon Jovi, and Def Leppard. Yeah, yes, Moulin yes. Rouge is another one, too. Basically where they take music from that and use it in the narrative. Mm -hmm. So I didn't realize that that's what Rocket Man was. Uh, I didn't watch Bohemian Rhapsody either. Um, <laughs> yeah, I, I waited it out and heard certain people's complaints about it and decides to, uh, to not it wasn't worth my time but um uh it was it done in the same way no so rhapsody um i don't even know if i would technically call rhapsody a musical what rhapsody is it's a biopic and it also tells like the stories of like well, it tells the story of pretty much of freddie mercury it focuses on him more yeah. I'm not going to get mad about the inaccuracy because I know there's inaccuracy that makes people mad. Okay. It's a Hollywood movie. Yeah. They're going to add a little bit more of a dramatic flair and make things a little bit more dramatic for the sake of the plot. Absolutely. They did keep the people, though, from Queen, though, in on the production, so they also watched the stuff. They also saw Freddie Mercury's performance. Actually, sorry, let's just go back to this one sec. Rami Malek plays Freddie Mercury. Yes. There's this fantastic story where Queen was sent a video of Rami's performance in okay. his test footage. So when Rami met them, he was supposed to ask them like what they thought. And he did, and they're like, oh, yeah, we didn't know how to open the file on our email. Can you show it to us? So he <laughs> had to watch Queen watch him. There you go. But they approved of him. They loved him. I think he does a decent he job. He looks great. I think he does a decent job. Um, I don't – now, that's the thing, though. Like, the story's a little messy. The editing is very sloppy. I hate that this movie won Best Editing at the Oscars because the editing is sloppy. It's choppy. And it won Best Editing for a 20-minute scene at the end that it does where it just uh. recreates the Live Aid concert. That's all it does. It just recreates the entire Queen Live Aid concert. Gotcha. That is not an accomplishment. Just copying someone else's work. It's, okay, it's called no. plagiarism. It's going to be okay. All right. Uh. It's going to be okay, buddy. But yeah, but Rhapsody, essentially, it just tells the story. And you just see um, them, like, creating the songs. And they sing a few of them. They do sing a few of them, and they perform a few of them. Okay. Well, with these Elton John songs, they're actually, like, doing dances. Yeah, There's okay. cutaways. They're walking. Like, it's actually like a musical, like, you would see on yeah. stage. It's being worked into the dialogue. Where, yes. in Rhapsody, it's just like, we made this song. Okay, let's sing it now while we're performing on stage. Or let's show our record label guy, and we'll gotcha. have a bit of a montage going. That's, that's it. So, they're different in that sense. I do not consider Rhapsody a musical where I consider Rocket Man one. Gotcha, okay. I know, um, uh, just basically what you said about Taron Egerton, um, uh, it sounded like a, his performance is very similar to, uh, Joaquin Phoenix's as Johnny Cash. Yes, 100%. 100%. And, well, and Reese Witherspoon, too. Well, Reese Witherspoon sang better than June Carter. But, uh, yeah, okay. Uh, I guess it's worth my time. It is. It's Rocket Man is very worth your time. 
I really think you should watch it. And just also to see, like, even if you don't, in the end, end up liking it, you will still be entertained by Taron's performance, and you cannot deny that he did such a fantastic job. Awesome. Amazing. Awesome. Okay. Thanks. Yeah. Definitely you have a out. third pick. I do. Um... This is one where a lot of people will argue that the movie is better than the... Well, some people will argue that the movie is better than the musical. I'm just going to give a disclaimer. I have only seen the movie. I have only fully seen the movie, but I've seen the difference, the stage difference. Okay. And Because there's one main difference, and it's uh, Little Shop of Horrors. Okay. So, Little Shop of Horrors, the movie is pretty great. Rick R- Moranis is perfect as Seymour... And, and um, uh, Steve Martin as the dentist is just great. Um, but the biggest difference is it's pretty true to it, except for the ending. The ending is completely different. They actually shot the original stage ending, and then the higher-ups, I think it was the producers or something, or uh, might have been the producers or someone on, uh, on the higher end of the production, basically said, yeah, we don't like that. Make up a new one. Okay, I don't know the difference between the two endings, so, so uh, explain to me here. So, the original, or the movie ending is a lot more like a happier, more feel-good mm-hmm. ending compared. Um, in the musical, um, I believe Aubrey and Seymour both die, or they run off, and basically they realize that the plant is going to take over the world, that Aubrey too is going, or Aubrey? Yeah, Aubrey or Audrey, I can't remember. Um, is going to take over the world, and it does. It ends with the plant taking over the world. Okay. It's a very, like, out there ending, but yeah, on that stage, is very it really works. It was really well done on stage, um, for the performances I've seen. And it's just an interesting change to see that it was proven to have worked on stage, but that movie producers decided that no, we don't think this is going to work for our medium. We don't think our audience is going to like this. Which is kind of funny, in my opinion, because the movie came out in 86, and if there was really a time for just bizarre, funny things to happen in the movies, it was the 80s. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Although I do think the change happened because they wanted more, well, like, they wanted a more feel-good ending, which is very Mm -hmm. in line with the 80s. And maybe they wanted to be taken a little bit more seriously. Oh, absolutely. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. That is definitely a um, uh, definitely a, a tough pill to swallow for some uh, for some uh, audiences. The 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 big um, just rid- it's really ridiculous in the best way possible ending. But the the movie itself is great. It really is. It uh, um, just well it became an instant classic pretty much mm-hmm. sometimes i know at the box office they originally considered it a failure but now over time it it had cult classics uh status and now it's just a classic not a cult classic well it still is a cult classic but mm-hmm. it's more i don't know why well-known. it would lose its cult status well it's it's still it's cult it's, it's still, still cult. cult like here's the thing i don't think cult should be because it's lesser known it should be because of its content Fair. And very much so, the content of Little Shop of Horrors, I feel, is cult classic. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Um, just while we're... Just as a little aside uh, that just popped into my head, I know a lot of musicals... Um, a lot of musicals recently are actually based off of movies. Mm-hmm. It's kind of gone the other way. Where we had a lot of movies based on musicals, it's come back around. And one of the ones that I know that the musical really elevates is Heather's. Uh, the Really, the musical that got me into musicals. Are you talking about the Riverdale version? <laughs> I quit. <laughs> this episode's over. Uh, I'm, I, 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 I didn't... I was alerted to that. I don't watch Riverdale. I have, I have taste. But um, uh, I was alerted to that and... Ooh, oh, you boy. Know, you know the meme videos online where like people put like text in on everything i'm like based on people's like expressions and things of stuff yeah watch the riverdale like meme version of the heather's music it's hilarious uh, just like the asides people put in there man and just just the comments too like what the fuck are those writers on these days honestly yeah but uh, basically what i'm tying in is from a movie that people argue elevated the musical and uh took what originally the musical had done and made it better as well as the other way around with heather's i think it's a uh, I think it's a, a really cool relationship that we've seen change over time between um, uh, between um, theater and film. 
Yeah. That's it. That's all. That's it. I, that's I, it for the little I, shop. I agree with you. I yeah. also haven't seen the Broadway, so I can't oh, yeah. really well. talk that much. But uh, the film, I do believe, is a good film and worth your time. Absolutely. My next pick is an... It's a movie. The Greatest <laughs> Showman. Haven't seen it. Oh, my God, Noah. I know. I, listen... <laughs> After Hugh Jackman's first musical foray, I was a little bit wary. Okay, so here's my thing. Hugh Jackman's fantastic He's in always, this movie. He was pretty good in Les Mis, too. So, a lot of people's problem with this movie, like, it's not at all what P.T. Barnum was like. P.T. Barnum, he was a shit guy. I don't know Absolutely. if you know much about him. He was a circus guy. Of course he was, he was a shit he, guy. He, um, uh... I forget what it was exactly, but he pretty much made up this lie about, um, uh... A, one of like the women that he had in the show and then he said she was like half gorilla or so i don't know yeah. he made up like something yeah. absurd and then and he made money off of that of course and then when she died he paid people to come in and see her corpse and see if oh he was telling God. the truth or not so the man just tried to profit off of everything that's disgusting it is but so that, that that's pt barnum so people were like mad that it's it humanized him and blah 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 once again i don't really care about that now if i'm going to see something that's supposed to be a hundred percent extremely accurate and then they're just like ah nope okay maybe i'll be a little bit upset but essentially it's hollywood they're gonna add a hollywood flair yeah this is a different story that he's telling it's obvious that none of it ever happened so i just took it as it was it was a move it was a movie about a circus guy and he just happened to be named pt barnum yeah okay that's that's the best way to look at this movie now, my main problem with the movie is that the pacing is a little off. Um, it has a really good soundtrack. I've heard that. It has a very good soundtrack. Zac Efron is great in it. Zendaya is fantastic in it. The, those two have such a great chemistry. Um, it does explore uh, a lot of, of course, women not having many rights and black people having a lot less of those rights. Um, it's not, like, very heavily touched on, but it's touched on in the movie. It, so it does go into the time period. Yeah. it's. I think it's a well-done film. It's directed decently. I don't ab think it's an absolutely fantastic movie. Like, I think all the other musicals I have talked about so far, that you have talked about so far, and that we have coming up, are far more superior. But Except, except Les Mis. Except Les Mis. Except Les Mis. Yes. Yeah. Sorry, I forgot we talked about Les Mis. See, I already blocked out that we talked about Les Mis. Yeah. Um, no, I think that it's, it, it's a good movie. It's fun. It's fun to watch. The cast is great. The songs are great. It has some issues with pacing. It has some issues with the story that it's telling. So I wouldn't take it extremely seriously. But it does have some nice things in there that they do well. And it's it's a fun movie to watch. It's a fun yeah. movie. Okay. It's a fun but movie. At the end of the day, that's all, that's all for... Uh, that's the best thing a musical... Or not the best thing, but that's... At the baseline, that's what I want to get out of a musical if it's not going very deep, because mm -hmm. I just want to have a good time. You could have also a completely different opinion here, because I saw this with a group of people, ah. and my opinion is completely different than one of the other person's opinions. Once again, shout out to Sue, whose opinion is completely <laughs> different than mine on this movie. Okay. So, mm -hmm. uh, that's really all I have to say about The Greatest Show. I just wanted to bring it out there because it was something that was done more recently. Yeah. Um, it was something that was just uh, Hugh Jackman wrote a script to, and they made they made it a musical. It was loosely based on the life of P.T. Barnum, but it had all original music, and it's just an exam a good example, in my opinion, of a modern day... Not It doesn't take place in the modern day, but it's happened in the last few years, yeah, yeah. so it's, that in that sense, a modern day musical with good music. Good yeah. original music. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Okay. What do you got? My next one isn't out yet, but I'm just extremely, like, extremely... Like, is isn't out in theaters or isn't out on Broadway? I don't know. Oh, it's been, uh, it won Best Musical, um, 2008, 2007? Okay, because I, like I have never even heard of this. So, um, Joe, I take it you've heard of Hamilton, right? Yes. Yeah. I have heard... Who has not heard of fucking Hamilton? This is all set up, Joe. Let me build it. I'm actually not that big on the soundtrack to Hamilton, but you can yell at me for that later. I, and I will, and I will, because um, Hamilton, it, 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 anyway, never mind, we're not getting into Hamilton, yeah, we're not, but In the Heights is actually um, one of uh, Lin-Manuel Miranda's first foray onto Broadway. Okay. So this is the first one he wrote, um, it's basically about um, a community in uh, Manhattan, I believe, um, called Washington Heights, and it's a very um, heavily Latino and uh, Latin community. And 
it's slowly being like gentrified so prices are going up and a lot of these people who don't have a lot of money are being forced to move out and the whole theme of the uh of the musical is just home it follows a couple different characters um the main one is usnavi who um originally uh Lin manuel miranda originated the role who basically he runs the um like corner store and he ends up selling this winning lottery ticket to this old lady who's basically his grandmother in the community um and she wins uh ninety six thousand dollars and then she dies so it's basically um has all the themes of home and knowing where you are in the world accepting where you are in the world and to some extent chasing your dreams and realizing what you actually want in life and especially his story throughout it it sounds like it shares some similar themes with hamilton very much so mm-hmm. very much so uh, musically it shares a lot of themes with hamilton it's another hip uh hamilton's more hip-hop musical but um there's definitely aspects of a hip-hop musical in in the heights and one of the biggest things is you notice you start to uh, pick up on uh lynn manuel's um uh you pick up on all of his little like the things he likes to put in like his last notes um you realize that there's a couple recurring themes in the way the music flows and the rhythm so it's his first one and the reason i bring it up is because one it's my favorite musical and it has been announced to have a movie and they're actually working on it right now and i'm very excited because it's got a great cast by the looks of it already um anthony ramos who played um he played john lawrence in hamilton is playing lead role of usnavi um stephanie beatrice from brooklyn 99 rosa she is going to be playing uh, a smaller character um daniela I believe, and one of the things that I'm excited for is Lynn is once again back playing the Piagua guy, who is just this little comedy side character, but just as one of those things that adds to that, the world, it is our world, but adds to the world of the musical even more. Mm-hmm. Um, it's actually, I've just looked this up right yeah. now, because I'm actually interested in this, very interested. So it's set for a June 25th, 2020 release, awesome. so next summer. Yeah. Um. It is not being directed, though, by Lin-Manuel no, it Miranda. Is not. And it seems that the script has been written by Quiara Algeria Hudes. I'm pretty sure I butchered that, and I <laughs> apologize. Um, and, and it's based so it's based on Lin-Manuel Miranda's Broadway musical. So yes. because it is brought on an entirely different writer, even though it has Lin casted, the directing, I understand. You know, you want a director to give it its own, his own spin on it. But I wonder how, like, original it'll stick to its, um, what is the word I'm looking for? It's source material. Yes. It's source material. So I wonder how original it would be. That's just something that I'm currently Absolutely. pondering. Me but too. But it sounds really interesting. I'm very interested in this. I know one of the things is um, uh, Lynn was tweeting, uh, tweeting about it a little while back that... Um, He's worked, there's been, I think, one or two new songs added, and a new character, and they've asked Lynn to write that to make sure it fits. So he's still involved in the creation of it, um, but no, he is not directing it, and um, ultimately it is in the director's hands. So it'll be interesting to see how he how he treats it, because In the Heights has always been um, Lynn's baby. Like, Hamilton's his big thing, but uh, In the Heights he's always uh, been a little riskier with. Okay. No, I'm very excited by this. Um, it's not that I... I like the story of Hamilton, and I like yeah. the performances. I'm just not big on the music that much. I'm Ooh, not. I, I gotta disagree with you. I'm sorry. Uh, I'm not. It's just it's just a preference. The composer, um, uh, Alex Lacamore, he's, um, he's everywhere on Broadway. Mm-hmm. He's uh, He did Hamilton, which won the best musical and a ton of other awards. I believe it won for its composition. Or, uh, yeah, won the Tony. And then he went to Dear Evan Hansen, which then the next year won the Tony. And recently, um, you might have seen it, I believe it's on FX, the TV show Fosse. I haven't seen it, but I, I know what you're talking about. Yep. He's working on that currently. And so he's got, he's he's all around um, the musical world. So uh, I gotta I gotta disagree. He's, he's a, I, I, I like his personal touch. You know, you know what I got from this? What? A mobster named Tony Fosse would be super awesome. Absolutely. <laughs> 
That is a good last <laughs> That's name. That's what I just got from that. Yeah. <laughs> um, moving on, my next pick. I picked this movie because I've already talked about its original. Oh. I want to talk about its remake. Oh, no. Is this a mini rant? <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I did defy everything I said I wouldn't do this summer. Oh, and no. And I saw the Lion King remake. Oh, this is Joe. the part where like a clap of thunder comes down and the lightning goes. <sighs> and everyone listening to the podcast is pressing the skip 15 seconds button waiting to listen to your voice again, Noah. <laughs> All so, right. quickly, All right. quickly talk now. Yeah, give them some yeah, okay. Help. All right, Joe. Um, I'm going to need you to breathe, okay, buddy? I need you, <laughs> no. I need you to make sure you're breathing clearly. Nope. Fuck that. All right. Okay. <laughs> okay. Should I open a window? Should I cool it down in here? If it's about you to would, get hot. If you would like your neighbors to hear this, sure. Open oh, no. a window. No, no, no. I don't need the police showing up at my door. <laughs> All right, Joe. Take it away, right. buddy. Fuck the Lion King 2019 remake. Holy shit. Where the hell did these people get off? Okay. So this movie still tries to, like, follow the exact same story it's honestly not different at all besides a few different character changes i think the biggest difference in this movie is instead of being captured in a cage by scar zazu just kind of like flies around pride rock waiting for simba to fucking return that's all he fucking does zazu was actually the biggest disappointment for me the thing i was most excited about was john oliver i thought he would capture the spirit of that character perfectly it would have been beautiful amazing but he doesn't it falls Aww. flat it's like john oliver just half phoned it in it's not great at all i was so disappointed in john oliver okay like what the hell he just pulled an ian duncan i'm pretty sure he drank <laughs> and then he showed up and just half fast it okay for those of you that don't get that reference john oliver played professor ian duncan in community okay watch it great show that's something actually i'll happily talk about but Joe, this Joe, what? he's busy he's working on this show man i don't give a fuck um, listen this movie is so so bad like it's just the exact same movie except to extend the runtime they added unnecessary shots of just animals do walking it's just animals fucking walking around there's one where it's just ants marching for like five fucking minutes why 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 this extends the movie to be over two hours it does not need to be over two hours it's a simple elegant tale and people are like, well, it tells the same story, so isn't it a good movie? No, no. Just because it tells the exact same story does not mean it's a great movie. Scar. Oh, my God. What Scar happened? is played by the guy who plays Mordo in Doctor Strange. That ends Sheetwell Sheet Eleanor, I think. It's some, his name yeah, is yeah, something yeah. like that. But, oh, my. What the fuck was this guy doing? He delivers his lines like this and gives awkward pauses for no good reason and randomly changes the tone of his voice why who the fuck knows they butchered be prepared noah actually oh my i did God. i no no i i i i i've heard it and actually um i had this discussion with someone else i heard it i heard be prepared and be prepared oh, obviously nowhere close to the original but as its own thing, if that original didn't stand, it still strikes me as a good, menacing villain song. It just changes no. the kind of villain that Scar is. No. Because Scar's the exact same villain throughout the entire movie. Yes, yeah, I haven't seen the movie, yeah. but I'm saying, like, it, like he strikes me as this big, um, not so much this, like, uh, as he was in the original, not more, like, this underhanded, more... He strikes me as this, uh, in that one, like, this loud and proud dictator. Type. No. And I know that's not what he is. But I just... He's just... The, the big difference is that he's less sarcastic in this movie. Ah, uh, okay. Which is part of Scar's charm. Absolutely. The main problem with this movie is not that it adds that, or the fact that the lions, when they're talking at the time, the lip sync doesn't match up. It doesn't. It's fucking shit. Why did we have to make an entire animated movie that was just live action? We didn't need it for another generation. The other one is perfectly fine. The animation holds up. The voice performances hold up. The songs hold up. It's all fucking amazing. But the biggest problem with this is that this movie is just half-fasting it. People's performances are not as powerful or as the original. Everyone talks to interviews, oh, I was so happy to be a part of this. It was something so great. It just sounds like you're just half phoning it in and then just going home for the day. You don't put in any of the heart, soul, and energy that the original has. It does not capture the original feelings. This movie is a complete and total waste of time. A stain. Why is Disney remaking these live actions? If you're gonna remake them, make them interesting, remake them for a good reason, and maybe add your own personal spin on it. That's why I'm a little excited for Mulan, because it's its own different 
new story. Okay? Maybe we does need to be called Mulan. Maybe you could have just made something else. Okay? But Mulan, I get it. You're going to get marketing out of that. But The Lion King was so terrible. I hate how much money it made. And I hate how many people love this movie. And I hate how many people are running to defend Jon Favreau for this piece of shit that he made because the Jungle Book was better and the Jungle Book was already unnecessary. And this movie only happened because people loved that Jungle Book live-action remake. Favreau, he fucked up on this. It's all fucked up, and people need to stop acting like it was such a great thing and giving it such great reviews. Guess what? Disney did something bad. Fucking live with it. You, you good, buddy? You I, re- I really needed to get that out. Are you, are you okay, buddy? I... No, I'm still so I'm so tense right now. I'm so <laughs> I, mad. I can feel it. Like I can oh. feel it. the temperature in this room just went up twenty degrees. I'm like unbuttoning my shirt because I'm so hot now. Fuck. You want a drink? You want? No, we're almost done. Um, go ahead, Noah. Give me your. So you asked for for this last one um, to pitch a stage musical we'd like to see as a movie. And I 100% agree with you on this. I, I was thinking, because um, Hamilton, who doesn't love Hamilton, but Hamilton really, all the music flows into each other. Like, that's what the musical is. You listen to the soundtrack, that, except for one little part, that's what you're hearing. Um, another one that I recently really fell in love with was Hades Town, And once again, that's kind of the same thing. So I wanted to go with one that I thought would also translate well into film. And I think you could definitely do some really good things with Book of Mormon. That that's my pick. Um, I love Book of Mormon. It's hilarious. Who doesn't? Well, it's uh, it's it's uh, well, it, you can clearly tell it's by the same guys who made South Park. Mm-hmm. Like, and it's just um, for the casting, I would keep the original um, Elder Price, uh, uh, Anthony, well, Anthony Rannells. Anthony Rannells is so good. He's recently done um, uh, Big Mouth, I know. But he just does a great Elder Price. And um, I think that that musical would very, like, would be great. And same as actually the original uh, the original Elder Cunningham was Josh Gad, who has said he's yeah. not going back to Broadway. So let's bring Broadway to him again. Josh Gad, he's great. Oh, he's, he's great, He's yeah. that, and um, he's also in the movie adaptation of... Something that I don't think is the greatest, but I do love him in it, uh, the 25th Annual Putnam County Spelling Bee. I was not aware that there was a movie version. There's a movie version, yes, and it stars Josh Gad. Huh. Yep. Couldn't have been... I would have heard more of it if it was good, right? (laughs) Well, it's the 25th Annual Putnam County Spelling Bee. It's not that great to begin with. I mean, it's... It, it is what it is. Mm-hmm. It's 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 a it's just a charming little musical. It's it's very good for small theaters. Like it very trans well uh, translates well to that. Um, and there are some genuinely touching moments in that uh, musical. But uh, yeah, I I think I think Josh, if you keep the original two for that mo- for a Book of Mormon movie, will be great. And I actually was also kicking around the idea: what if you animated it? I feel like you could do An a lot. Book of Mormon. You could do a lot of have a lot of fun with the like figures of. I almost envision it sort of animated like um, Emperor uh, Emperor's New Groove. I feel okay. like that type of a- kinetic animation lends well to someone like um, like Elder Price, that main character, that sort of angular art style. I have to interject. Sorry, I just yeah, because I went to go and confirm this. I am. I'm. On, I'm half right. Josh Gad does star in an adaptation of the 25th Annual Putnam Counting Spelling Bee. It is not a movie, though. It was a play version that Got was it. just stream. It was streamed online. Got so it. Okay. That is, yeah. that is how I know it, how I know his performance. It was not an actual movie. I apologize for that. Oh, good. But, um, yeah. No, but Emperor's New Groove for uh, Book of... I like that. I yeah. like that. It has, it has a very similar, um, has very similar vibe, very similar tone. I feel like that very animation would so. work. Yeah, yeah, I, no, I really so. like that. Yeah, That's I thought a great I wanted pitch. to do a, something a little bit different, so I wanted to throw in that animated feature because mm-hmm. we haven't actually talked about any animated musicals. Well, Lion King, but fuck the Lion King, not that version, not 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 the original. I love the original; it's amazing. Of fuck the remake. Yeah. So uh, yeah, I thought that, I thought that'd be cool. I think those two guys are the right guys to uh, star in it. I don't know who I would give the reins for directing. Well. My heart always tells me for any movie, Edgar Wright, just because he puts so much into every scene. <laughs> but I don't know how Edgar Wright in musicals Yeah, how Edgar, Edgar Wright in the Book of Mormon, there would just be... Let's try it. Why not? Why not? 
Yeah, I don't know who I would. I feel like you'd have to have, you know what? You know who I think would have fun with it and do a good job? Who? Jack Black. Absolutely. I'd let Jack Black di- direct the Book of Mormon. Abs- that's a good shout. Actually, there was someone who, uh, Taika Waititi. I'd let him do it too. I would. 100%. I would let that, if they did like a co-director thing. Ooh. Just, I just want something where Jack Black and Taika Waititi work together. Oh my god. I want to see amazing. that. would be amazing. And Jeff Goldblum is there for some reason. Yeah, why not? Just um, he's just there. He for can some be one of the he can be one of the older uh, Mormons. <laughs> Throw him in there. He there you go. Jeff Goldblum is just Jeff Goldblum is just Jeff Goldblum. They write a scene where Jeff Goldblum shows up in the Book of Mormon. <laughs> what are you guys doing? Oh, that's cool. That's cool. Oh God. Oh Jeff Goldblum. <laughs> what a treasure. So finally, my uh, last pick, which was what I would pitch, is a musical that I very much enjoy. I think it's absolutely hilarious. Falsettos. Yeah, do you, do you know? Do you know falsettos? Yeah, of course. Okay, falsettos is. It's just so much fun. I love the music. I love how it like flows in and out of each other. I like how it transitions, especially um, uh, day in falsetto land, where it just transitions to all the different people and what they're doing throughout the day. Uh. I just I love the performances. I love the humor to it, the comedy. I, th- that move, that movie. Fuck. That play literally opens on the song Four Jews in a Room Bitching." Yeah, <laughs> it really is. Um, I'm actually just looking now, cause I think that Anthony Rannells may be in a version of Falsettos right now. Let me check. Like on Broadway. He was. 2016, he was in Falsettos as Wizard. Speaking of Broadway, I just wanted to interject. Something that I wanted to say before Yes. was that um, The Lion King does have an amazing Broadway. Oh, amazing. Just wanted to quickly throw that in there. Also, funny, music by Elton John. It is, yeah. Yeah. But The Lion King, fantastic Broadway musical. He also does some of the songs for the original animated, too. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Sorry, so back to this, though. Yeah. Um, Anthony Reynolds, he is... Wizard. He, he was, uh, as of 2016, he was. I don't know if he's still there. I would mm-hmm. say probably not, where he's doing Big Mouth right now. Mm-hmm. And he's always busy. He's just great, and pe- other people recognize that. But yeah, he's uh, he's in, uh, he was in Falsettos as Wizard. Okay. I would, yeah. That's just my thing, though, is that I would want Falsettos adapted. Nothing crazy about it. Just yeah. do a movie of that, and... Yeah, give me sort of, give me another soundtrack. Yeah, sort of like Rent. Yeah, no, yeah. exactly. I, I I would just love to see that. It's not something that's necessary. It's not something that has to happen. Um, but if I had to pick any musical to get a film adapt, just go into production pre production right now on a film adaptation, I would choose Falsettos. I would love to see an adaptation of that, and I think with the proper comedy actors to pull it off, it would be really well done. Absolutely. Who would who? Uh, what's one name you'd throw out there for it? Um. The psychiatrist, uh, Marvin, correct? Yeah, I yeah, believe so. His name is Marvin. Um, if I were to cast Marvin, I'm trying to think. I want to be smart about this. <laughs> I don't want to just be like, I would put Seth Rogen. No, ooh, I wouldn't ooh, put Seth Rogen. I got Rogen. a choice. Uh, I got a choice. Russell Crowe. Get out. <laughs> sorry. Get out of your own fucking house. I'm sorry. Um, you know who I would cast as Marvin? Who I think could do it? I don't know if he can sing. That's one of the things that I don't know if he can okay. sing. But who I think can, because he's a super nice guy in real life. He's a very diverse actor. He's very talented. And I think he could pull off. I would cast Dave Franco. Okay. I like Dave, Dave Franco. Franco. I like Dave Franco. Ooh. I like what he does. I think he's very talented. Um, I what don't know else? if he can sing. That's my only thing is I don't know if he can sing. But I don't know if he can either. If he can sing, I want. I would cast Dave Franco. That's a decent, yeah, I can see that. I he's a diverse that. actor. Actually, I do want to uh just jump in. I've been calling him Anthony Rannells. It's Andrew Rannells. It's Andrew. Okay. Yeah. I thought the name was wrong it, too. Yeah, it is. But I'm like, he knows what he's talking about. Yeah, I I, I usually do. Yeah. But uh, yeah, Andrew Rannells. That's okay. We were allowed to make mistakes. That's why we have the ending to just we exactly. make some, we make mistakes. Exactly. We do. Which is also why fantastic announcement that when okay. our new episodes start up at the end of September, we will actually be having a fact checker feature that we're adding on. Just at the end of the episode, we're going to have someone off to the side with a laptop fact checking everything that me and Ava talk about. So that is coming actually to Ooh, the podcast. Interesting. Yeah, it's something just we're adding just to keep ourselves a little bit more authentic because we have made mistakes. 
Um, and we want to, of course, decrease those. But yeah, that's also why we have the end of the episode right here. We fact-checked ourselves. Yeah. Um, I believe that's everything, though, for our musical discussion. I think so. Noah, I want to thank you so much for being here. Anytime. Your experience and your knowledge about all this has made this a fantastic conversation, one that's very intelligent, and one that also taught me new things and uh, and went to very uh, personal depths for you. Aww. And I know that you also did connect with a lot of these uh, adaptations. Yes. And I just know that how much the musical theater means to you. So thank you so much for coming here and lending your expertise. Thank you so much for having me, Joe. Um, I know you don't have anything YouTube or anything, but is there anything you want to plug? Anything you want to promote while you're here? You got the chance. Not yet, but if I'm back, I'm hoping to me and one of my friends at home are uh, working on getting a YouTube channel uh, off the ground. Mm -hmm. So we're uh, keep... uh, Keep an eye out for that. And I know, um, I don't think we have any Newfoundland listeners, but if anyone is ever out in Newfoundland in the summer, there is the Grand... Grand Bank Regional Theater in mm-hmm. southern Newfoundland. Yep, and Noah, you perform there. Every year. Uh, every year. Uh, check him out, guys. He's very fantastic, very diverse. Aww. And I'm sure, as you've noticed today, he has such a great speaking voice. Thank you so much, Joe. <laughs> You're very welcome. I mean every word. I don't lie. <laughs> Which is why I tell you it's straight. The Lion King remake was fucking trash. I'm, I'm sure it was, buddy. <laughs> It's okay. It's gonna be okay. I'm not saying the movie's okay. I haven't seen it. But don't, don't, I, I don't didn't... waste your time. Yeah, I heard. <laughs> I'd like to thank everybody once again for listening to 21st Century Cinema. Once again, we are on Patreon. That's patreon.com forward slash TFCC. Go ahead, give it a look. And you can also follow us on Instagram. Give our Instagram page a, t- a look at. You can follow it. It's at 21st Century Cinema. You can also follow me at the one and only JDV with underscores in between each word on Instagram. You can give Ava a follow at Ava Carvello. And Noah, do you want to shout out your Instagram? Um, yeah, you can follow me at uh, Dr. Dr. Dick Earthquake. <laughs> Dr. Dick Earthquake, which is actually the next uh, thing we have coming up, our Q&A, me and Ava. We oh. mention you a lot because Noah is constantly sending us questions. Always Great questions, by the way. I love them. We have some great conversation about it. I've heard, so. uh, I've listened to one of your Q&As. Mm-hmm. I uh, heard your, uh, I believe it was the Wes Anderson, Edgar Wright conversation of who mm-hmm. has more, yes. um, more rewatchability, but mm-hmm. I'll be sending in further questions, of course. Yes, you have sent in a lot. We do have a lot to talk about with what you sent in, and it's always a great laugh when you get to say, and our next question is from uh, Dr. Dick Earthquake. Of course. <laughs> but yeah, uh, give Noah a follow follow him see where his personal life journey takes him as it is a constant road of paths changing and crossing uh thank you guys once again so much for listening and we will see you guys in the next episode keep an eye out next week for ava's episode on musical score and that's all for now thanks again